G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video, again from last week's Daily Race C, but before we get into that, I had a very special moment on this stream here, called Hardest Car to Drive. Now what happened? Oh my goodness, I was starstruck, but let's see what went down. Something's not feeling right with this wheel. Oh! Oh! What? <laughs> Super GT! What the? <laughs> Super GT! You are kidding me! You're absolutely joking! Oh! Oh, I don't even know what to say. You're the man that sparked all this. <laughs> Mate, I'm absolutely awesome now. My God, I am absolutely fangirling right now. Hello, Super GT viewer here. The man that started it all. Super GT's content um, changed me from a casual racer to someone who wanted to improve. And that's what I've been doing ever since. August 2018 is when it, it clicked for me. And ever since then, and I was when I started watching Super GT, I should make that connection. Um, yeah, it was right in the middle of grade 12, all my exams, stress from school, um, you know, and then I started watching, I started watching Super GT, I started watching your content, and, um, it sort of gave me something other than, something other than school to focus on, I didn't have to worry about grades or studying when I was watching it and I was a casual GT Sport player like I, I just got like got the game for Christmas I was just on controller um, and yeah when I was watching the content I was like oh man I wanna what look <laughs> look at the guy in 11th <laughs> yeah oh my goodness okay smock don't choke this race <laughs> oh no I'm gonna do it now. I'm just gonna get my- oh! Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> oh, what? No! How have I killed someone as soon as Super GT starts watching? All I can say, R4M. That's all I can say. How was that? Okay. What is going on up here? Surely that makes up for it. What the hell? Your job as an R4M member. Hey, look, gotta keep, gotta keep a roof over my head. Gotta keep food on the table. Well, there's arm day done. Well, 
Don't know how that move was on the Persia. I feel like I got on his right hand side enough. The curb was there for me to use. Get that podium, bro. Podium received. So, yeah, 500 subscribers, face reveal. And when I do, I've got some awesome uh, stream attire. The awesome stream attire. Got the R4M. And I got the slowdown. So I've got the whole bloody wardrobe to wear on stream. One day. One day. Alright. Um, so just to review chat, we've had the fastest current Australian driver. We have the legend himself, Super GT, and a dozen other top split Oceania, Oceania drivers here as well. Pretty cool night. Yeah, <laughs> um, absolutely. He's all set for the special day. Oh, can't wait. Absolutely can't wait. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> bloody Super GT jumped in my stream chat uh, the other day. And I was just blown away. Why would someone like Super GT just click on to my little, uh, small little streamer stream? But uh, I don't know. But it made my night. But we, look, we will have to move on. We have to move on to uh, some actual content. Because that preview at the start of Super GT ended up being way longer than I actually wanted it to be. So we're going to move on to this. Daily Race C from what might be two weeks ago by the time you're watching this. Yes, it's taken me a while to get this video to you. We've got an excellent launch off the start. We've just overshot turn one really badly and a couple of people undercut me on the exit here including this RX Vision driven by M. Nojo and I've got someone on my right hand side but they just completely back out. I've got another Honda driven by Jester looking very very uh, ominous coming up towards Eau Rouge and Radion, but we managed to slot into second position and just run single file up this hill. Really important to do because running side by side in these wet weather conditions here through Eau Rouge and Radion is not a very smart thing to do at all. We've got the slipstream of Nojo, so you have to be careful in the braking zone coming up uh, into Le Com Chicane. Make sure we jump on the brakes nice and early because we're going to have cold tyres off the start as well. The RX Vision just slides ever so slightly and look how much time we gain driving this Honda NSX so it just goes to show that the meta car really is meta as we get a load of oversteer on the exit of the curb there not as bad as it could have been but just slipping on the curb a little bit the RX Vision has a nice little wobble a little bobble on the entry to the corner and it just sends him a little bit wider than I'd like but it doesn't open up the gap on the inside large enough for me to actually put the Honda up the inside then we have a slide heading through no name corner that's not going to be very good for the gap behind although I think Jester and Merlin have made mistakes uh, through the tight hairpin so the gap just opens up slightly, giving me a little bit of breathing room to be able to get away with my mistake I've just made. So we're just going to have to focus on staying in the slipstream of Nojo here as we slide on the exit of Puon. We have to make sure to keep this car under control. Really difficult to do because the wet weather conditions just drop the grip levels so much. We're taking so much less speed through the corners than we normally would be in the dry conditions. We've got the heavy wet tyres on, so as much uh, water squeegeeing ability that a tyre can have in this game, we're still slipping and sliding all over the place if we get too trigger happy on the throttle. But really what makes the wet tyres so useful is that if we jump onto this surface in a slick tyre, it's undrivable, it is undrivable, because you've got probably you've got a layer of water in between the slick tyre and the slick road surface so there's no part of your tyre actually touching the surface you're just sliding on top of a puddle of water and that is no good at all slipstream coming up towards Blanchemont here we're going to run slightly wide off the exit there I think we just about kept a wheel on the uh, yellow and red curbing to avoid ourselves a penalty but I think it's given us dirty tyres because we've slid really deep into the bus stop chicane and that's going to translate to really poor exit speed and actually really poor speed through the chicane in general. And unfortunately for me, I've just dropped out of the slipstream of Nojo now, but we've got the attention of Jester behind. And coming up towards this very long straight, heading up through a Rouge Radion and onto the Kemmel straight, uh, it's going to be really difficult to try and keep Jester behind. But let's see if we can get a good exit out of turn one, just really gentle on the throttle, just trying to avoid the wheel spin in the first place. 
uh, and that gap to Jester is about half a second now. Jester's going to have to have a really good O'Rouge ratting on, taking a little bit more conservatively than he normally would with the dirty air coming off the back of my car. That gap opens up to about six tenths of a second, six and a half tenths of a second up towards seven tenths. So Jester's not got the best O'Rouge ratting on there, and that gives me breathing room once again because seven tenths back is not quite close enough to be able to get a move. In fact, that gap's only just equalised as we head down to the end of the Kemmel Strait. And thankfully, the gap to no-show is still 1.4 seconds. Right, so this race is interesting, actually, because this race actually came from another stream. My daily race stream from last week, or two weeks ago, I keep saying last week, Wet and Wild Daily Race Chronicles Part 4. So we did this race during that stream, so if you'd like to see my live reaction at the time, I've linked the stream up in the card below, and I'll probably put the timestamp in the stream on the screen right now, so you can go and watch uh, exactly this race on the stream, but normally I try and avoid making content or videos out of a race I've had on stream, because it's just like recycling content and people have already seen the race, but this one was just so good that I really needed to make another video uh, out of this. Check out that slide through Puon as well. Basically had the Honda completely sideways heading on the exit there. Um, but yeah, no, this race is so good because you've got an interesting dynamic here. So I'm just making some mistakes on this lap. So uh, that gap to Nojo is opening up to about two seconds now. We have Nojo ahead in the RX Vision. So not quite the best car for the wet weather conditions, but Nojo is a very fast driver. So he's managing to keep that RX Vision under supreme control. Uh, on the wet surface and I'm struggling to actually keep up and I'm driving the Meta car so the Honda NSX and the Audi R8 are two of the best cars uh, for this uh, well were two of the best cars for this Daily Race C gone so they can really sort of help carry someone maybe slightly off the pace but you may be able to make less mistakes and be a little bit more consistent in the Honda or the Audi compared to something like the RX Vision that um, front engine rear wheel drive layout can actually be quite difficult uh, to uh, get out of the exit of the slower corner so you've got Nojo driving this slower car but he's probably a faster driver than me who I'm a slower driver but in the faster car I've got Iqbal behind one of the faster drivers in the region or the one of the faster drivers I encounter on daily races we've also got Yama Yama Kusan who was very strong this week in this combination uh, but we have a history uh, the pair of us unfortunately uh, not really any fault of my own and I've got Jester in fourth. So Jester's uh, being in fourth or near the front of the field is definitely a good achievement there. And Jester's doing a good job. But he's got Yama Yama Kusan to try and uh, sort of fend off now. He was very quick sitting like 43s in the race. My qualifying time was a 43, I think. Was it a 43 or a low 44? It's something of the two. But... The point I'm making is that Yama Yama Kusan coming up really fast behind me. Iqbal, really fast driver behind me. I don't know what car Iqbal's in, but I'm sure I'll look behind at some point. We can perhaps try to identify. And I've got no joke. Faster driver, slower car, but let's have a look and see what the gaps have all done while we've been talking about that. The gap to Nojo was two seconds at the end of the last lap, remember, and it's up to 1.9, or down to 1.9 rather. So we're making slight inroads into the gap ahead but as for the gap behind, Iqbal has sort of drawn that gap ever closer. He's about eight tenths behind as we head through Le Fagne chicane. Let's see how that gap develops as we head through here. I think Le Fagne was one of my better parts of the track, but Iqbal has just closed down about a tenth. Uh, the gap to Nojo back up to two seconds. So we're just struggling at this particular stage to actually try and make some positive movements in this race. I'm struggling to open up the gaps I need to and close the gaps that I need to as Iqbal gets into the slipstream now. So he's about six and a half tenths behind me and we'll see how much that gap closes as we head up this straight towards Blanchemont. The dirty air is gonna take hold as we head through Blanchemont because it's not flat out as it normally is in the dry or just about flat out as it normally is in the dry. Uh, in the wet conditions, it's actually a braking zone, so we have to be really careful. We've got to make sure we brake on time for this bus stop chicane too. We made that mistake earlier in the race, and it just opened up that gap from Nojo to beyond the slipstream range. So that's actually, I think, what may have put me in this predicament here, where I no longer have the slipstream benefit off the car ahead. As I said, a 244.7 in the race, not a bad lap at all. And actually, I've got a really good exit out of the bus stop chicane there, and it just opened up the gap 
to Iqbal to just beyond the second heading up towards La Source hairpin but as we exit La Source I think Iqbal has had a very good exit there and that gap is just teetering towards the edge of the slipstream range but thankfully the slipstream takes over just in time for Iqbal and he's able to actually get deeper within the slipstream and begin gaining on me before he ended up uh, driving or falling out the back of my slipstream range. So seven tenths as we head out onto the Kemmel Strait. Uh, someone's got a penalty in fourth and I think Jester's fallen down into seventh. Not sure if he's made a mistake there. But I was feeling a little bit sorry for Jester there. But it's all good. Bit more practice, that's all you need. Practice makes perfect. We absolutely nail the first apex of Lacombe Chicane. And look at that gap to Nojo come down 1.3 seconds. It was 1.4, 1.3, 1.2 seconds. So I've had a very good Lacombe Chicane. Nojo's had an average Lacombe Chicane. And we've gained like about half a second there from one little corner there. So it's just so easy to make a mistake. And the RX Vision being a little bit more difficult to drive consistently and get good exits in the wet conditions compared to the Honda and that's just seen Nojo make an error and the gap's closing down so this is getting this is where it starts to get interesting Yamayama Kusan up into fourth now behind Iqbal who's about half a second behind me so Iqbal's gonna have the slipstream heading down all the straights he's gonna have the dirty air through the corners and I was absolutely convinced that the dirty air really really made your car feel a lot worse uh, compared to how it does in the in the dry conditions Normally in the dry in Group 3, it's sort of like you can feel a little bit of dirty air, but it's not so much of an issue. It's just you don't really have to change how you approach a corner in Group 3. You just kind of have to know that there will be some dirty air, and you sort of subconsciously make slight adjustments to how you turn in and how much speed you take through the corner. But you can quite easily follow somebody uh, through all the corners uh, in the dirty air of another Group 3 car. But in the wet weather conditions, because we're like so close... To, the, to literally the, the edge of the grip levels. We're, we're right at the edge of the adhesion available on the wet tyre, on the wet surface. The dirty air, it just adds that... So it just pushes you over the edge to the point where it's so, so easy to actually disconnect from the road because the downforce is actually a lot more important in the wet weather. So if you lose a little bit of downforce, all of a sudden uh, you've lost a lot of grip and your car just starts sliding to the point where it's so difficult to catch. But anyway, have a look at the gaps now. We are within the slipstream of Nojo and we've got about three laps to go towards the end of this race. So the slipstream at this particular stage is really, really crucial because Nojo is struggling. There's tyre wear and fuel use in this race. The fuel's not really an issue, but the tyre wear can be. And if you're in a car like a front engine rear wheel drive that already has trouble launching off the corners as soon as you've got a little bit of tyre wear in there it just makes that exponentially worse and makes it really extra extra difficult every single lap you do it or every single corner you exit to get an FR car out of the corner fast enough not to fall victim to a move from an MR car because the engine in an MR car is in the back you've got more weight over the rear tyres and it allows them to sort of purchase into the road a little bit earlier because they got more weight pushing them down but let's see if we can get past Nojo on this lap now because we're within the slipstream. We've also got to make sure we don't fight too much with Nojo to allow Iqbal to capitalise on that fight and get two for one. So we've also got to make sure we don't get stuck behind Nojo and allow Iqbal pass because Yamayama Kusan will be there ready to have my position if he sees the opportunity arise. So we've got to make sure we take that dirty air into account there. You can see it's just a little bit slippy on the exit of the corner. Make sure we hit this apex because it's really important to try and be as close as you can for Puon because the exit of Puon is one of the biggest spots where you lose out with dirty air. So let's see, we're braking a little bit earlier than we normally would just before the 50 or just before the manhole cover before the 50 meter board heading into Puon here. And this is where the dirty air takes effect. You can see the car just disconnected. I had to come away from the throttle. Just counter steer ever so slightly because if you keep your foot in it the car's just going to slide more and more and more and it just gets to a point where it's it's basically impossible to recover it without losing a lot and a lot of time but throughout this sort of handling section nojo has extended that gap to just a seven just just above seven tenths it just clicked to about seven and a half as we headed through turn 14 and as we head on, out onto the back straight let's have a look at the gap it's just within the slipstream range of Nocho which is which is very lucky because Iqbal is only one and a half tenths behind now so we've got the slipstream of Nojo and this particular dynamic if Iqbal uh, did pull out for a move he would run out of steam because he'd pull out of the train and not have slipstream whereas I would so it would be able to sort of 
begin to get extra speed. No, uh, Iqbal's driving the Honda as well. He was looking like he was going to go for a move into the bus stop chicane. We've actually made a big mistake and gone slightly deep now. And Iqbal's going to look around the outside of the second part of the chicane. He's going to try and get a cutback on the exit because he wasn't able to get the job done around the outside of that second part of the chicane. And now he's looking up the inside of the source hairpin. I think he's got the most minuscule amount of overlap there, so I can't even move across to the right to defend the position. I break slightly later than I normally would just to take a wider entry. I still meet the apex, though, and just defend that position from Iqbal. I have to be really careful with how much I defend as well, because if I defend too much, I'll lose more time than I need to, and then that gap to no-show will extend out beyond the slipstream range. But thankfully, that really, really close encounter didn't result in myself losing any position all the slipstream so I'm still right in the box seat here and I'm still in the fight for this first position now so four tenths or four and a half tenths to Nojo as we head down the Kemmel straight he made a mistake on the last time we went through here I think and he actually it might have been a couple of laps ago but the point being he made a mistake at this part of the track which got me back into the fight from two seconds back and he meets the apexes nicely through there actually and that gap just stabilizes and remains at around four tenths of a second we get out of Malmody just about as smoothly as we actually need to heading down the hill got to make sure we don't break too late because it's downhill off camber in the slipstream with the dirty air and it's really easy to make a mistake at that corner and actually I don't want to break too late and end up running into the back of Nojo and ruining this whole fight we've got hotting up here so still four tenths behind. We'll see how that dirty air takes effect on Puan on this particular occasion. Just before the manhole cover on the 50, just like before, we're closer than we were before, so we have to be extra, extra careful than we were, than we were last time. The car just starts to disconnect as we begin to push the throttle in more and more. We're about 50% throttle all the way until the car's straight, and you can see we actually haven't really lost time to Nojo at all on this particular occasion through this handling section. We lost out last lap a little bit, with the dirty air of no show so just taking that extra lap now just to sort of take into account a little bit better and we've learnt from the previous lap what the car does when we're closer to Nojo in the dirty air and we've actually done a much better job in that particular rendition of the handling section to try and stay as close to Nojo as possible towards Blanchemont once again we're going to try and just remain in the slipstream and it's actually it can pay to be a little bit more patient so you may be looking at this thinking oh look you could probably get the move done at the bus stop chicane but oh, let's see what we actually do here we're really really close I was going to sort of talk about it maybe smarter to get the move down the Kemmel straight but I think Nojo is probably close enough to fall victim to a little bit of a move here he takes a really narrow line here and we just get around the outside of the first part it gives us the inside for the second part of the chicane Nojo just about gives us enough space we give him space on the exit we out drag him out of the corner because we've got the MR car underneath us and look at how much time we've gained through there Nojo just wasn't able to to get the power down onto the road in that uh, front engine rear wheel drive with not much weight over the rear wheels. They're side by side in the exit of the source hairpin. Iqbal's been hung out to dry. He's not been able to follow me through because I've made such an opportunistic, unorthodox move at the chicane now. And look at that gap to Iqbal. It's opened up to beyond the slipstream range. So we've got one lap here to try and just extend this gap and make sure we don't get caught by the faster drivers behind because you've got Nojo, Iqbal, Yamayama, Kusan all behind in a battle pack of three, just losing time as the positions fluctuated through a Rouge Radion and they're now 1.3 seconds back so we're just going to be focusing on our marks just trying to get this lap clean and not make any big mistakes it's really easy to make a mistake especially on the last lap of the race you've got all the pressure of your final finishing position upon you you've also got the most amount of tyre wear you ever have in the race it's really important when we exit this corner we don't get too much oversteer and try and correct the oversteer as it happens as you can see we're trying to do there about two or three kicks of oversteer as we ride that curb out on the exit. Yama Yama Kusan has gotten through the pack and I think they're actually driving the Ford GT and they managed to actually get within the slipstream range heading up towards Blanchemont. It will give the Ford GT a little bit of dirty air but that Ford is a lot better in a straight line than the Honda but that gap opens up to eight tenths. We've got to make sure we jump on the brakes on time. I think we've managed to spot the apex and just feather the brakes enough to make sure we meet the apex and not stop too early and as we exit the chicane it's going to be a victory as we get the power down. 
Yummy Yummer is not close enough and we cross the line with just over eight tenths to spare between me and the three behind that were just vying for that victory and putting so much pressure on myself. And look at that, I was able to remain composed, not make mistakes, and I was able to keep the Honda in one piece in a straight line for seven laps of Spa in the wet conditions. What a really good race. That was my best race of the week and I felt really energized and rejuvenated after that result because I was like, oh my goodness, I managed to actually keep my composure. And look at this result ahead of Yama Yama Kusan, Nojo, and Iqbal down in fifth, just finishing the race, unfortunately for him, with a penalty. A total time in 19.20, which is nothing to sneeze at, and that is a victory. But that's going to finish up this video today, so do hit the like button if you enjoyed, and do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and streams from me. Do leave a comment as well. Questions, comments, and constructive criticism, as always, very much appreciated. But that's going to be the end of this one today, and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.